If you're worried about noise traveling from one room to another, you might want to think about creating a noise control wall. Since I'm relining this room anyway, it's the perfect opportunity. I'm going to be using Pink Bat Silencer for this job. It's a special insulation that'll reduce sound traveling between your walls. Check out the How to Install Wall Insulation Easy As Guide to see how it's done. The idea behind noise control walls is the more layers you have, the more effective it is. Now there's a few different ways you can achieve this, but in this case I'm adding to the Pink Bat Silencer with two layers of jib noise line wallboard fixed to a jib rail system. Now the jib rail provides separation of the board from the framing. It's this gap that helps cut down the noise between rooms. Here's my jib rail. We're going to put five of these rails onto the wall. Each rail needs to be no more than 600mm apart, so mark out where your rails will go. I'm using a chalk line to get a nice straight line across the wall, because if you only measure up from the floor, it might not be accurate, as the floors in older homes can be uneven. Right, we just finished attaching our last jib rail. Now the dimensions for this are no more than 75mm down from the top and the top of our jib rail has to be at the bottom of our top plate. Rightio, I've already measured and pre-cut our jib noise line. Time to fix this in place. Jib noise line always attaches vertically, unlike standard plasterboard which can go horizontally. Now as you can see I've allowed about 5-10mm to 10 mil gap underneath the board. Any gaps that are left around the perimeter of this board we're going to fill with sound seal later. So let's just give ourselves a nice straight level line. So all our screws go directly on our jib rail. Now we don't use glue with the jib rail system. I'm screwing the first layer through the centre of the sheets with a 25mm self tapping screw to get through the rail. When fixing your jib noise line, make sure your screws only go through the rails so nothing penetrates into the framing as that would compromise your noise control. Rightio, as you can see I've been fixing in the centre of our sheets. I've been fixing to our jib rail system at 300mm centres. Right here, our first layer's on, now's time for our sound sealant. Now the idea with a sound sealant is, the better you get it in, the more noise control system you're going to have in your wall. So you want to get all your verticals and around the perimeter of your sheets. The trick here is that you've got to treat your walls like a fish tank. Any holes in it need to be filled, so the better you get your jib sound seal in there, the less noise will come through. Now you just want to be really diligent that you really do get the sound sealant filled up that gap nice and tidily. You don't want any pinholes in this wall whatsoever. Wipe up any excess sealant with a damp rag so it's nice and tidy, ready for the next layer. Right, the idea when you're fixing your second layer to your first you don't need any glue, you're just fixing longer screws through into your jib rail once again and I've got a 600mm offset from one edge of the sheet to our previous. The second layer of jib noise line goes on same as the first. The only difference is we're using 41mm screws to get through both layers to get to the jib rail. If you have a power point in the wall, ensure that it's not back to back with another power point in the adjacent room. If it is, you'll need to move it. Once your last piece of jib noise line goes on, apply your jib sound seal, but this second layer you only need to seal around the edges. Now there's our noise control wall all finished, all we have to do now is stop it like we normally would. This method works for soundproofing an interior wall with timber framing using a jib rail. Each job can be different, so have a look at the jib website to make sure you check out the best solution for your job.